Today we're going to be talking about how to create a custom button style in Swift UI. Let's get started. So first things first, let's get a little bit of an understanding of how buttons are laid out. So if we go ahead in here, you can have button, action, and then you can also have the label. Now what we are editing here is the label. So let's say I have text button, it's just going to be a plain normal texture. If I wanted to add, you know, padding, if I wanted to add a background, you know, let's do that. If I wanted to add like corner radius, let's do that. We can also change the font here. So we can say title. We can also change the color. So let's say foreground color uh, will be color dot white, like so. And now we have this custom button. Now, generally what some people might do is you would take this button, you would create a new structure. This is going to be like custom button. This is going to be a view or something like that. And then you can feed that in there. Maybe you have your action up here. So on and so forth. You, you don't have to do all this. This is all totally unnecessary because Apple actually has, or Swift, I should say, actually has dot button style. And then you can include button styles alongside this. So they have their own like defaults if you want to uh, use whatever's built inside of Swift UI. But to create our own dot button style, we need to do some extra steps to make this work. So first things first, let's go ahead, leave this as is. Let's create a new file. This one is called my custom button style. And then for me personally, this is how I keep things a little bit more cleaned up. We're gonna say struct custom and then open, close, curl the bracket like so. And then now this structure is going to hold all of the UI elements and changes that we're going to be having. This way we can easily say uh, extension custom. Then we can say struct button style colon, and then this is going to be of the type of Swift UI dot button style, like so. And then now it's going to say this does not conform because it doesn't have a body. So in order to do that, we need to say make body. It's going to provide a configuration. And then you can say configuration dot, and you will be able to see that we have the label, we have is pressed, and then we can also grab the role. So if it's like destructive or anything like that, uh, we can also use that to our advantage. Now this is essentially all you need, right? So you have your configuration. If you want to, you can just say configuration dot label, call it a day. And then if you want to tag on any of the adjustments that we created earlier, you have that button style. Now this right now works. You could technically come in here. Let's erase this. We can say dot button style and we can include our custom dot button style like so and it'll automatically add that. However, it's not really, this isn't really pretty. So the way that we can make this a little bit nicer is we can go ahead and say extension uh, button style. And we can say button style right now because we're not inside of custom. So button style is referring to the Swift UI button style in this case, where self is equal equal to my uh, custom dot button style. And then inside of here, we just say static var, uh, this will be custom. And then we're going to make this return self. And then inside of here, you can just say initialize it. So it's basically saying if the button style that we are giving it, which is custom, is equal to the custom bot dot button style, we're going to initialize the body here. And so now we can say button style dot custom. And so we can go ahead, build and run that and you can see the button over there with its styling. Now this is a, basically all you need. If you want to, you can like copy the paste this, create multiple button styles, so on and so forth, but it gets a little bit messy. So let's go over how to use enums to make this even better. So we're gonna go ahead and say enum, this will be my, let's say button variant. Then we're gonna have case, let's say, you know, default. For example, we need to wrap those in back ticks like so, so that we can use default. Then we can have another one, which will be, let's say, blank, for example. Then inside of our button style, we can go ahead and ask for a button variant to be provided alongside the button style. So we say let variant colon, and then this will be my button variant. And then we can now use this if we say switch variant and you can say default or blank or so, so on and so forth. And now you can use those in here. And then for the custom, it's now going to ask for a variant to come alongside it. 
So we need to change this into a function so that we can provide a variant. And then we say custom.button variant. And then we're going to make this return self like so. Then inside of here, we can say init with the variant. Then it's going to pass along the variant that we gave it. Then from here, you should be able to see that this is now throwing an error. You say custom button variant. And now if you say dot default, uh, it'll be able to show that one. And then if we wanted the other one to look plain, for example, we can just throw that there where it's in the which it returns uh, the default label. Uh, and then now if we say dot blank, it'll look like this. Now this might be good enough for you, but if you wanna make this a little bit cleaner, we can go ahead and add another extension to custom. We're gonna create a new structure here, which will be my button content in the which we want it to provide the label. So we're gonna say label view like so. And then this is going to be returning a view. We need a place to store that label that is passed along. So we're gonna say let label colon label. And then inside of here, we paste our variants. We need to grab this variant and add that into the initializer as well. The configuration.label is no longer accessible, so we say label, and then this will also be label here, like so. And then now inside of here, we can say button content, pass along our configuration.label and our variant. And then now we have our button style, we have our custom button content, and you can edit this as you want. And now as we go back to over here, we now have dot custom variant dot blank and default as simple as that. And then now whatever you add inside of this label will be then wrapped around in your style. So if you add padding to this, if you want to add an image into it, it's just going to apply the button style on top of it. Now, something that should be noted is this is for a button style, but you can also say Swift UI dot and then they have like different styles for everything. So they have like form styles, list styles, label styles, uh, picker styles. Some of these don't have the body necessarily accessible. Uh, you'll have to play around with it. Uh, but like if you want a text field style, it's basically as simple as this, uh, just working with the configurations and creating things your own way. But there you have it. Uh, that is essentially how you create custom button styles, create custom themes. This makes things a whole lot simpler in the end so that you don't get lost. So hope that helped. See you in the next one.